<laughs> hey, Lyoko Warriors, this is Captain Yeet here for you for another cool Lyoko episode review. This is going to be Season 4, Episode 10, titled Hot Shower. So, let's get into it. And I am recording this on December the 24th, but when this is, well, sorry, I am recording this on December 24th, but when I upload this, it will be on Christmas. <laughs> so, Merry Christmas, everybody. Kolioko on Christmas. Nice. We had Mother's Day for Kolioko. Uh, Father's Day this year. I don't think I put it in the thumbnail. I think I forgot. And there was one other holiday I did a Kolioko video on. I can't remember what it was. But hey, that's pretty nice. We had a lot of holidays for this show. All right. Anyway, the episode starts off with the opening. After the opening, we cut to Auric, Odd, and Aelita in the digital sea inside of the skid. And Jeremy's obviously in the computer room. Now, the reason why they're already down there at the beginning of this episode is because they're trying to find... Well, Oz, Oz is the one that specifically says this. They're trying to find the spiritual essence of William somewhere in the digital sea. Maybe Xana's keeping it somewhere here, and they can get that. They can bring William back. So, I'm like, that was really interesting. I don't think we ever heard, like, you know, the phrase spiritual essence. Like, you know, we just always hear, like, digital code. You've been downloaded into Leo. We never heard, like, your spirit goes in there. So, that was pretty cool to hear, especially from Odd. <laughs> you know, like, that was pretty cool. And hopefully, maybe they can find William's spiritual essence. Maybe they can find Alita's dad, Franz Hopper. And then maybe. So, while they're flying, well, not flying, while they're, um, not swimming. Because kids, I mean, submarines don't swim. While they're propulsing through the digital sea, um, I think... Will, no, not William. Odd brings up William because, you know, they're like, they're trying to find William, a uh, spiritual essence. And he cracks a joke about how, man, I can't wait to, I mean, Orc can't wait to have his rival back. Our good old pal William. Isn't that right, Orc? He goes, you know what, Odd? Sometimes it's just, it's a bit too much. He goes, sometimes. Oh, man. I'm losing my eggs. <laughs> Jeremy, he makes sense about how Yumi's helping Mrs. Herx in a project about. He didn't really, uh, basically, I am no, I'm stuttering a lot, my bad, let me slow down. Basically, Mrs. Herx asked a ton of older class or students, like ninth graders, 10th graders, if they can they if they if can help out the 5th graders in this science project they're doing. What's the project? Mrs. Herx made this huge replica of the sun on the track field. And each pair of students of 10th grader or 9th grader and a 5th grader or maybe two 5th graders, they pair up. They make one planet and they're gonna place it around the sun to make their own little solar system. That's the plan for you know this little science project. And after they mentioned about how Yumi couldn't be here because he's doing that, we cut over to Mrs. Hertz telling everybody the rules. And Yumi's just there. She goes, "Oh my goodness, why am I here? <laughs> I could have been on Miyoko or something. Like this is so lame." And then Hiroki's friend. Actually, I just watched this full episode and I forgot his name. Let me look at the subtitles because he literally talks to um, Yumi in a second. Uh, Yumi's trying to say his name. Oh, Johnny. Johnny asks uh, Yumi if he can be on her team. She goes, ah, ah, Johnny. That's not up to me. That's up to Mrs. Herx. And so he just yells out loud if he can be on Yumi's team. Everybody starts to laugh. She goes, huh? All right, fine. I mean, it's whatever. But don't be goofing around with Hiroki. You can get some work done. So now it's Hiroki. Johnny and Yumi on one team, and right after that, we cut to Jeremy watching the news. And on the news, the news lady is telling everybody that there's a gigantic meteorite that's heading towards Earth. And if it hits Earth, it's going to kill everybody and every little <laughs> It is going to kill everybody and every living thing on this Earth. Yeah, that's pretty intense. But then she says that, well, it's not going to hit Earth. If it did hit Earth, yeah, we're done. <laughs> but don't you worry. We calculated it and it's going to fly right past the Earth about 200 miles or well, 2,000 million miles off that way. So it's not going to hit us. And this he mentions even if it was going to hit us, we have a satellite up in space that the military made with lasers. So even if a meteorite was going to kill us, we can swoop that sucker right out the sky. So don't, nobody need to worry. Jeremy's watching this, obviously. He goes, hmm, okay. I mean, you know, we're good, but... That's kind of wild. <laughs> like, we're, we're this close to everybody dying, and she just, like, casually makes it, like, oh, we're not going to get hit, but if we did, yeah, we'll, we'll be dead. <laughs> anyway, we cut back to Mrs. Herx and everybody. She's telling everybody the rules, and then Jim, he takes the microphone, or the uh, megaphone, the megaphone. He takes, I don't know why I did that. He takes the megaphone, 
And he talks to Tolovey about it, about how now when you plant your spikes in the ground to hold your planet, be very careful. Because one spike has nothing on it. That's where you place your planet. But the other spike has a really sharp edge on the side. He's holding the spike in his hand. And then some little girl. We've seen this little girl before, but I don't think she has a name. She runs by and snatches the uh, the spike out of Jim's hand. He goes, she goes, come on, man. Of course, we know this. you got to be an idiot not to know it. And she runs off. And then the camera pans back to Jim. Jim's hand has a little band-aid on it. And Mrs. Herc sees that. She goes, huh, Jim? <laughs> idiot <laughs> that man is an idiot. he poked himself that's why he was telling everybody i like that though. that was pretty funny because i thought jim was just trying to be like extra safe or like extra careful but no that man just stabbed himself with the... <laughs> so dumb <laughs> he was so dumb anyway uh the very next panel panel the very next uh scene we see xana activate the tower on lyoko and then we see jeremy in the computer room and then we see the asteroid in space coming towards Earth. So Xana's doing something to make the asteroid come towards Earth because obviously, yeesh, that isn't going to be too good. <laughs> that is not going to be too good. Anyway, Jeremy sees the activated tower and tells Alita, like, no, sorry, tells Alita to stop because they actually did find some sort of spiritual energy little ball in the digital sea and they were going to it. But then the activated tower happened, so now Alita has to go back to Lyoko. Now, they never, like, said out loud that they're going to put a marker on that. Like, you know, save the coordinates around here so we can come back here and find out whose that is or what that is, you know? They don't say that. Part of me is, like, maybe they forget. Or the other part is maybe, because it's a digital sea. Anything can happen. So maybe some water could move, or, you know, quote-unquote water could move. And that spiritual essence ball that was, like, over here could have moved somewhere else. And also, just like me, uh, there was like a few scenes in this episode, not even a few, a lot of scenes in this episode where they were the voice actors for whatever character, mainly Alita, Jeremy, Alina was like one for An and Oric, Yumi too, yeah, for like everybody, they were talking really fast, like in some line, like you can still understand them, but they were talking really fast. Part of me was like, maybe like, cause you know, this was originally a Frank show, and then you know, they got English over, so maybe like some lines in this, ep in this particular episode, the mouth was moving so fast, so they had to keep up. But part of me was like, well, some scenes where that happened, you hear them talking really fast and then you see them. Like, you don't see their mouth yet. But still, the audio where they're supposed to speak, they got, a, you know, English over there. So maybe they just had to talk really fast to keep up. I'm guessing that's what happened because, like, you can tell in a few scenes, they were just going kind of quick. I'm like, whoa. I mean, I could understand them. They were talking that fast. But I was like, whoa. <laughs> they were trying to get done with this episode today. Maybe maybe it was Christmas Eve for them, too. They're like, let's get done, man. <laughs> the voice Let's get this junk done. Anyway, we cut back over to Yumi and Hiroki made Earth. Or Hor Hiroki's supposed to be making Earth and Johnny's supposed to be making the moon. Now, Hiroki made Earth, but it's an oval shape and it's red. And, <laughs> and Johnny made the moon, but he puts plants on it. Obviously, Yumi's like, what do you guys see wrong with these plants? <laughs> Um, Hiroki says that he wanted to be a little more imaginative and that maybe, maybe Earth get, no, sorry. Yumi was like, Hey, Hiroki, what is the Earth called? He goes, the blue planet. Exactly. Why is it red? He goes, well, I want to be a bit more imaginative. Like what if Mars crashed into Earth? <sighs> and Johnny, why is there plants on the moon? You know, you know, plants can not survive on the moon. Well, I know, but it, will, it really spices it up, right? If you two knuckleheads don't go fix those planets right now, man, you, you're no fun. And they just walk away. And Jeremy calls Yumi, tells her about the activated tower, about the meteor, right? She goes, huh? Um, okay, well, I'm going to go. Like, she was just ready to bolt. <laughs> Yumi was ready to bolt, and she got out of there. We cut back to Jeremy watching the news. Obviously, Xana's making the meteorite come towards Earth. So we cut back to the news lady seeing that the meteorite is going to hit Earth. And she spazzes on national television. She goes, you know, this thing is going to hit us in like, I don't know, less than an hour. We don't know what. What? Oh, I'm sorry. That's just an April Fool's joke. We're not, we're not priming you. We're pranking you guys. It's not going to hit us. Besides, we got that military satellite with the lasers. So what good anyway? I mean, we don't have a military satellite with lasers. That's just another April Fool's joke. <laughs> I got you guys. But then Jeremy's like, yeah, it's not even April. I know what's going on. This is That's, that's what Xana's attack is. He's trying to hit the factory so he can get rid of the supercomputer because that's our only way to fight Xana. 
am trying to hit the Academy Academy because that's where you. Well, I don't think they said that's where. I don't think they said Zana knows that specifically where Yumi is. But you know, the Lyoko Warriors is only going to be in two different spots: either the factory, which he knows that in Lyoko, so you know he knows that there. Plus, you know, he doesn't want the supercomputer around. Or at Kadok Academy, he knows the location. That's where they go to school. So that's the two places where they're most likely going to be. So that's where Xana's going to try to hit the satellite. I mean, hit the meteorite. Because Xana took control of the satellite, shot it with a laser. It broke up into pieces. Now pieces are falling towards there. I forget to mention that. My bad. <laughs> I forget to mention that. Excuse me. Anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Xana, I mean, while Yumi is running towards the factory, obviously, Jeremy tells Yumi everything that's going on with the, well, in more detail about the meter, right? How it's going to hit Kadok Academy and the factory. And then Yumi goes, whoa, it's going to hit Kadok? Hiroki? Um, I'm sorry, Jeremy, but I got to go. So he goes, what? Yumi, you got to come here right now. Beep. He just closed. It turns off the phone and she runs back to the school to warn everybody and to warn Hiroki because, you know, her little brother's there. She got to protect him. And there was also a really cool moment, I forgot to mention, I'm so sorry, that um, when Jeremy figured out that he was trying to hit Kadok Academy and the factory, Alita told Jeremy to leave. Jeremy was like, no, I need to stay here and press return to pass before we get hit because we have to deactivate. No, yeah, he was, like, he was like, you have to deactivate the tower, Alita. And then Oracle was like, well, that's not really going to matter if <laughs> if we get hit by a meteor, right? Why would he even want to do that? Well, the supercomputer gets destroyed. You guys will be stuck on Lyoko. He can get Aelita. And then Kat and obviously I'll die in the factory. And then Yumi's at Kat Academy. She could die. I mean, she could die. That's pretty a perfect plan. Killing two birds with one stone. So, <laughs> yeah, this isn't pretty. Uh, this is pretty bad. Plus, he was like, you know, I have to stay here. To I mean, to click return to past when we're ready, all right? And then they're like, okay, Jimmy, that's that's what you're doing. So they start to fly over to back to Lyoko in the digital sea, Oric, Odd, and Alita. I'm saying that because I want the subtitles to get it. Um, and while they're flying back there or is proposing there, a firewall grabs them. And a firewall is like an actual wall in this universe. It's like this little bubble that catches them. So now Jeremy and Alita have to crack the code of the firewall for them to get out. Because, you know, they're going to be stuck in there. <laughs> they're going to be stuck in there if they don't do anything. Anyway, Yumi comes back, warns everybody about the meteor shower or the meteor that's going to come. Nobody really believes her until some of the little pieces of the meteorite fly down from the sky and hit the, like, you know, like 50 miles that way. Everybody sees it. Mrs. Hertz is like, oh. Yeah, we need to go. Jim thought it was fireworks. I'm like, even the principal thought it was fireworks. Because later on, when they mixed, talked to the principal evacuating the school, he was like, you sure it wasn't fireworks? I'm like, okay, the principal didn't see it. I'll give him a pass. But Jim saw that. Nothing exploded. Fireworks go up and boom. You know what a firework looked like? That looked nothing like a firework. Two, fireworks go from the ground up. You saw that junk falling from the clouds down. What are you thinking, Jim? <laughs> like, what are you, you know, come on. You didn't see it explode. You didn't see any colors. You didn't hear any. Oh, I mean, you heard something. But, you know, you didn't see any colors. You didn't see an explosion. And you didn't see it go, whoop oh. You didn't see it jump up. You saw it come down. That's two different things, dog. Two, <laughs> two different things, you know. You get what I'm saying. That's two different things. Like, come on now. That's, ah, come on, Jim. <laughs> ah, come on, Jim. That's just, that's just dumb. Anyway, they were able to finally crack the code of the firewall. And the firewall doesn't disperse. They have to use the propulsion to shoot forward. So it reels them back. And then she hits the boosters. And then boost forward. And they jump right out of the firewall of the bubble. And now they're on their way to Lyoko. Specifically, the desert sector. And this was a really cool scene. After they get out of the firewall, Jimmy was like really happy. And I just like this. <laughs> I don't know why, but I really like this. 14 minutes in, that's the first time I'm sewing the, the screen. Nice. I don't know why I liked it, but my boy Jeremy, he's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's what I need, baby. All right, let me put my towel back on the TV. And the principal did say it's okay to evacuate the school, but do not cause a panic. So Jim just tells everybody it's a fire drill. So that's what they're doing. And Jeremy's going to try to take over the satellite to destroy the meteorite. But Xana's going to have control of it too. So 
it's going to be a battle. <laughs> it's going to be a battle in the colds and everything. It's going to be pretty hard. <clears throat> All right. Jeremy calls Yumi, tells her to get his computer. She goes to get it, and Hiroki and Johnny see Yumi run the opposite direction of everybody else. And Johnny's like, hey, where's she going? Hiroki goes, hey, only one way to find out. So they follow you. <laughs> so they follow Yumi to Jimmy's room to get his computer. Anyway, we cut over to the Sea Warriors. Yeah, we cut over to the Sea Warriors. They go inside that teleporter to get to the Lyoko Sphere, and they get there. Then we cut the gym evacuating some students. Some more meteorites fall, like little pieces of the big one. And Jim yells at everybody to duck and cover. And he falls on the ground. Then he gets up. Everybody starts to spaz down. They're like, Jim, this isn't a fire drill. Like, you know, this meteor's coming down. Everybody calm down. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody calm down. It's fine. Like, nothing's going on. It's, it's whatever. You know, like, you just can't. Anyway, Yumi gigs, um, my bad, excuse me. Yumi gigs, uh, yeah, Yumi gigs Jeremy's computer and he, and she has to bring it up to the roof, connect it to a wire, and then he can take control of a satellite that's on, like, that's on another roof to where he can take control finally of the satellite in space. You know, he has to take control of another satellite to control the one in space. So that's where Yumi's going. She's going towards the roof. And once he goes towards the roof, we cut over to Lyoko, they finally get to Lyoko and land the skid, and then we cut over to Yumi, and Yumi's trying to bust down the door to get towards the roof, but it's not budging, it's locked. And then Hiroki and Johnny's on the bottom of the stairs, because he's on the top, and then Hiroki goes, hey, Yumi, Yumi's leg, or a locked door? I got my money on the locked door. And she's like, what are you knucklehead is doing here? You're supposed to be gone. Well, we'll leave, why don't you tell us what, what you're doing? She goes, I don't have time for this. Can you just leave out of here? Tell us what you're doing and we'll leave. And I really like the animation on her hair right here. And also later on this episode when they get to the roof, uh, when the wind is blowing, I really like the animation there too. Right here. Let me move out of the way so you can see. I really like the animation. Uh, yeah, I think she already... Yeah. She, she got mad and she went like this and her, her hair went down, but you saw it though. It was, I mean, it was only for a few seconds anyway, just moving side to side, but... I really like the animation there. And I only have a few minutes left, so this goes to the side. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, they get to Lyoko, and I really like this shot of Oric, Odd, and Alita just standing there looking at the tower that's like maybe 10, 15 feet away. They're like, well, it's right there. Let's get to it. <laughs> like, you know, this is going to be easy. <laughs> anyway, here's the scene right here. Boom. Like, this is dope, right? <laughs> this is really dope. I really like this scene. Anyway, they see a Karangulot, and a Karangulot charges up, as you just saw, and runs behind the tower. And then Odd goes, huh? I guess it was scared of us. No need to waste that laser arrow on a scared Karangulot. Orc, you got this one. So they all start to walk up towards the tower, but then boom, William and a few tranquilos come out of nowhere. Like, Whoa, okay, so they back up. <laughs> Everybody starts to back up, and it's specifically three tranquilos. Okay, yeah, specifically three. So everybody backs up. We cut back to Yumi, and Yumi's still arguing with Hiroki and Johnny, and she's like, you know, tell us what. I mean, they're like, tell us what's going on, and we'll leave. Yumi's like, okay, well, what do I have to lose? And she tells him, well, tells them everything, literally. But they don't believe it. But then a little piece of a meteorite falls right next to Catholic Academy. Big boom. It sinks the whole school and they fall over. And they're like, huh? Okay, maybe she's telling the truth. And they jump up and they go, okay, we, we, we can get this door open for you. Then we cut back to Lyoko. And on Lyoko, <laughs> whoo, it was kind of funny. So Auric, he uses super sprint and he runs towards the tarantulas. And he jumps up in the air and he goes to kill a tarantula. But a tarantula suits him and he goes flying. And then he goes, whew, it's hot. Odd. Why wouldn't it be? It's the desert. Yeah, okay, uh, this is the perfect time to crack jokes. But anyway, look at this. He runs over to the tarantulas, jumps, pow! <laughs> he gets shot back. And lands. I'm like, jeez, man. <laughs> My goodness, that, that had to hurt. Anyway, we cut back over to Yumi. Hiroki and Johnny are able to pick the lock. They say they do this all the time. They learned this and they're able to get to the roof. 
Yumi has to grab a cable, stick it into the computer, and she has to hold it there because it's like not big enough, so she has to shove it in there and keep it there. So she goes, okay, that's what I gotta do. <laughs> Let's do it. And then we cut back to Lyoko, and Alita's able to kill one tarantula, but now William and the two tarantulas are moving up on them, so they have to move back even further to the edge of the platform that they're on. So they have to be a bit careful. What's, what's, <laughs> they have to be a bit careful what's going on. Yumi, not Yumi, um, y Jeremy and the Xana start to tussle over the satellite with the laser, but it's a bit hard for Jeremy because, you know, Jeremy, he's just a human, and Xana is a complicated, sophisticated, I said that right, complicated, sophisticated AI program, so it's going to be a bit hard for Jeremy to get control over it back. Well, he has done that before on multiple things, but, you know, xana has been growing a lot stronger since he's been in the World Wide Web, so... Xana's not, like, that much of a pushover anymore, you know, like in previous episodes. Anyway, the two tarantulas back them up on Lyoko to the eggs of the platform they're on. They keep shooting at Alita, Oric, and Odd, and Oric's dodging, I mean, well, blocking all the lasers. Odd, he was blocking them too, but he falls down. And tarantulas don't even, like, they look at Alita, they don't even shoot, then they look at Oric and start shooting. And Alita notices that, she goes, huh? What the hell? Those tarantulas don't even... Take one shot at me. And then odd, he gets up. He goes, well, you got two awesome bodyguards. That's, I mean, yeah, but that's, that's not it right now, buddy. <laughs> that's not what happened right now. Anyway, all seems lost because Jeremy just cannot gain control of the satellite from Xana. And they're backed into a corner right now. So what are they going to do? Alita goes, well, we got to test Xana's metal. See how good he is. What do you mean? She uses her wings to get in front of Oric and Odd. She goes, what are you doing? She goes, Odd, they virtualize me. Xana wants me for some reason on Lyoko to get whatever, but if he can't have me, then let's see what he does. So Odd shoots Alita once and she gets devirtualized. It's really surprising because they have done this tactic before, but just, I mean, she, didn't take, she didn't get any hits from the, well, unless it was off screen, she didn't take any hits from the tarantula, so I'm like, what? What's? <laughs> Why does he get devirtualized in one shot from Odd? That really surprised me. <laughs> I was like, very confused. Anyway, there was a cool scene with Yumi's hair because Yumi was telling, here it is. Yumi was telling like Hiroki and Johnny to leave because the meteorite was getting closer and closer because Jeremy couldn't like um, de uh, get to control of it. And they're like, what about you? I have to hold a computer. You guys go. And here's a really cool scene here too, over here, flowing in the wind. That, that was pretty cool. Anyway, <clears throat> she gets the virtualized and walks up into the computer room with Jeremy. Then we cut over to Hiroki, Johnny, and Yumi. And there was a really cool scene while the meteorite was getting closer and closer before Xana blew it up. Um, Yumi started crying. Like, I mean, like, you know, a meteorite is going to come and kill them. Like, you know, who wouldn't cry in that situation? Like, jeez. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, jeez, Louise, who wouldn't cry in that situation? Anyway, but Xana, he's the one that shot the meteorite out of the sky. Oh, I forgot about that scene. When, when Alita came upstairs with uh, with Jeremy, she went like this. <laughs> I don't know why she did that, but that, that's what she did. But she's talking to Jeremy about how let's see what Xana does. Hmm. <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, here's the scene with Yumi crying. The meteorite is really close really close and she starts to cry and we even see the tears sparkle a little bit see <laughs> that was pretty wild anyway Xana blows up the meteorite Yumi calls Jeremy like hey good job and he was like no that was uh that was all Xana that wasn't me at all but hey that was pretty wild though and then Hiroki Johnny and Yumi start to talk a little bit and Hiroki like hey I'm gonna hold this over your head that helped you out big time here Hiroki, come on. Can't you just let this one slide? <sighs> it's not like you're going to remember it anyway. What do you mean? And obviously, Jeremy does return to the past now. And I might make this a thumbnail. It's Alita and Jeremy, like, doing this. Like, you know, pointing their thumbs backwards because it's return to the past. I really like that. I don't know why they did that, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. It was, <laughs> it was pretty cool. I like that. Anyway, here it is. And Yumi clapped, too. I forgot why she did that. Oh, yeah, it was, like, on time. Like, she was, like, okay. And then return to pass now. <laughs> that was so funny. 
Here we go. See, like, oh, come on, give me a little break. And he was like, nah. She claps. We cut over to them. They're both pointing their thumbs backwards because it was a turn to the past. And then they do return to the past. And then the scene picks up with Yumi walking into Jeremy's room. Everybody's talking. And he was like, so, how did it go? Oh, well, no, nah, sorry. Orga was like, so, how did it go? Wasn't that bad after all, Hiroki? He could be a little bit of a brat, but he is pretty useful. But man, I just found out something ridiculous. What? Locking my door is useless now because he just found out that they can uh, pick locks. So <laughs> that ain't good. <laughs> that ain't good at all. Then we get the credits. So uh, yeah, that's the episode for you guys. Uh, again, Merry Christmas. You know it's gonna be on Christmas when this thing gets uploaded because it's eleven seventeen now. So like, say, and subscribe. I see you all later. I thank you all for watching. I thank you all for being wonderful human beings. And I see you guys next time. Bye-bye. All right.